Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Now I'm sure we can probably all agree that one of the staple things that you should have on you, uh, generally in most times, especially with the within the EDC community, most people would all agree that a flashlight is incredibly useful. One of our favourite companies to work with is Ace Beam. They got in touch after IWA and asked if I'd like to have a look at a couple of lights. And of course I said yes. The first one being the Ryder RX version 2. I really do like this light, especially for everyday use. It's the perfect size to slip in your pocket and just integrate into your, into your daily carry. So, you know, let's take a closer look. Apologies for any wind noise you might hear in the background. Uh, I made a rod for my own back deciding to I enjoy filming outside. Um, now before we have a look at the Ryder RX version 2. Now for now, this is the Ryder RX version 2. I'm just going to refer to this as the RX version 2. Um, mainly because it's, it's just a little bit easier to, to say. Um, so inside the box, boxes fairly standard that you expect from Ace Beam. Uh, the boxes are of a very nice quality. You get the instructions and then you also get an extra box of gubbings here which you have. It actually shows you on the side here. So you get a charging cable, you get a lanyard, you get some extra O seals and you get your instructions so let's just put all of those back in for a second move those off camera because we're here today to have a look at this the Ryder RX version 2 now I will say just to uh, I suppose to, to point I never actually had a use or at least I never got to use the version 1 so I'm coming at this mainly with a, a com completely kind of clean I didn't have any impressions of the original one and you know what I think of this now kind of spoiler I, I love ace beam they make some great lights and I think this is another shining example no pun intended um, of just a very nice EDC style light so as you usually do we'll have a look at some measurements some materials and then we'll have a look at the actual functions of it and then we'll go down to the fishing pond later and we'll, we'll have a look at this in the dark now as far as your um, the uh, the size of this is concerned your measurements so it comes in at 96 millimeters by 18.6 millimeters um, in width now that's just for the actual shaft or the barrel of the light itself um, there is a pocket clip here on the side I guess if you wanted to you could remove it there are some screws you could remove it here however it's kind of integral to to how this function works um, so I'd say so with this one it's probably more important than other lights that you get the measurement with this on and it comes in at 26 millimeters so it's just just roughly an inch but generally when it's in your hand it does feel like a regular um, less than 20 mil style flashlight as far as the construction is concerned with this, there's a lot of lightweight materials in here. Uh, the main body of the, the actual uh, light itself that is within this, um, this external kind of sheath, I guess you'd call it, uh, that's made from aluminium and then on the outside you have this really nice... Um, what is it? It's kind. Of, it's got like a stone wash finish to it. If I bring this up here, it looks really nice in this light. And this is made from titanium, which again is very, very nice and also helps to reduce some of the weight on it. As far as on the outside, so I like the I like the colours that they got with this. The blue and the uh, the, the grey of the titanium go very well together. Uh, but then there are some markings. So there is a kind of a J turn here, which you've seen me do a, a, a few times today. Um, but I was also in here, so just there, there, there are some small ball detents, and then on this side, there are ball detents as well. So on here, it's on the left, on there, it's on the right, and then when you see, you can see that those swap over similar how you get like a, a, a liner locker, maybe not a liner locker, but you get a detent on a, on, an, on a knife. Towards the end here, it says Ace Beam on there, and then just underneath, it says your Ryder RX2. Now on the, uh, on the reverse side of all of those, you also have some information as far as the LED in this one is concerned. So it uses a Nichia 51, oh sorry, it uses a Nichia 519, I was gonna say 5190, that wouldn't make sense. Uh, a Nichia 519A LED in here, which is great. 
Um, there are a couple of options, or at least a couple of different options that you can get as far as the light or as far as the LED in this is concerned. So if I take you back to the box here, uh, on the side, might, this might be difficult to read. Uh, so the version that I have, this is the, or at least the temperature on this one is 5000K. There is a 5000, sorry, there is a 6500K temperature where you can get up to 1000 lumens. But instead with this one, I opted for the 5000K, which is 7000 lumens, but it does have a, um, it does have a higher um, CRI number of 90. So I, I, I think for this one, you, you, you do get a very nice brilliant white light from it it's a very clear light um which again you know i mentioned about ace beam making nice lights it, it, it's one of the beauties that they you know they they go into the leds they like to make sure that they provide decent enough leds um the reflector in here <clears throat> hopefully you can see in there uh, beautiful flat not particularly deep this isn't designed to be a thrower this is you know this is designed for everyday use something that you can keep in your pocket with a knife and a pen um, and just kind of take out whenever it is that you need to um, the, the the modes that you get on this are reasonably standard you get like an ultra low low medium and high um, there isn't uh, fast access to ultra low or fast access to turbo which you know we we will, we will have a look at uh, but yes that is down there in the end now to kind of get to the point that I, I, I keep pressing this forward so inside the box you do get a USB type-c charger so this is rechargeable however it, it's definitely slightly different to other lights so rather than the USB Type-C socket being somewhere on the outside here, which hopefully you'll notice there isn't, instead, so the head unit, rather than the tail unit or the tail switch, which generally is uh, how you get this off, you actually unscrew, you unscrew the head unit there. I'm just gonna put that there carefully. <clears throat> and then on the inside here, you have one of Ace Beam's uh, 14500 batteries and this is what you will charge um, there's a little LED on the top as well so whether it's uh, uh, whether it's full green flashing green or is it full green and then there's also a red on there um, so you can you can see when it is charging when it's full um, but what it just means is that if you do need to charge this you have to take the battery out um, some people actually prefer that you get a couple of these lights so whilst one's been used you can actually be charging them which is great um, but this is also the same as a double a battery so it does also mean that if you are out and about and you find that your battery has now run out that you can just go and pick up a double a battery uh, and it will it will slot in uh, and, it, and it will work straight away now one thing to point out is that you might find that there's some variants. I haven't got the details on this, but what you'll tend to find is going from a rechargeable light, which generally has a higher output than a double A, a double A battery, is that you might find that there's some difference in the max lumens that you'll be able to get from it. The lumens that we'll have a look at today, so these will be the, uh, the, the this will be the lumen count um, with the rechargeable battery in there. Um, now, actually, one thing that I did skip was, which I, I, I like to do, my, my granddad always kind of used to show me this because he says it was a good gauge of uh, how well the machining is done on an item is. So, let me just find the thread. The thread's just in there, maybe a quarter of a turn, there's a little bit of movement. Another half a turn, hardly any. Now, I've managed to seat now onto the onto the O-ring that's in there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really good. Uh, now when you push this in, it, it, it is a J turn, you have to push it in, because if you just push it in, now when I try and depress this, it will it will come forward. So like a bolt action, you have to push it up and then you have to turn it to actually lock that in place. So now if I want to turn it on uh, on and off, then I can do with the, uh, with the, uh, with the clicker here on the end. Um, now, as far as I, I know, I mentioned the O-ring that is in here. So, if you're thinking, certainly thinking about everyday use, and you you're concerned with dust and water, um, this is highest that you can get for consumer electronics. Uh, so, it's an IP68. The IP, or at least the 68, is actually two separate numbers. The, the the six is for its dust rating, which is its highest that you can get for consumer electronics, and the eight is for its water rating, which again is the highest you can get for consumer electronics. So, it's safe to drop from roughly 
uh, one and a half meters up and it will continue to work uh, and you could potentially submerge this under two meters of water and it will um, when you bring it out again it will continue to work as well now, as far as the UI is concerned, I have kind of touched on this, but it's just this one tail clicker here on the end. Um, now, I, I, do you know what? I think it, it feels as though that there's two parts to this. It feels like there's a metal bit on the outside, and then on the inside, this is where you, you have your kind of little rubber bit that you can depress onto. Um, but it's a simple click for on, simple click for off. You can kind of do a... Can you did I do it? Yeah, you can do you can do a half press, which will give you a, which will give you a momentary. Um, but that's how you can you can cycle through each of the different settings if you necessarily don't want to keep turning it on. Um, but it works in the way that some other lights work. So in fact, let's get this down to the low. So right now we're on ultra low. <clears throat> Um, hopefully you can you can see that on my hand there. Ultra low is just five lumens. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So you have a little bit of a bit of a frog in my throat. Now, if you want to then change it up to from ultra low to low, you have to turn it off and turn it back on again within one second. Now you can see that it's on low, which is 50 lumens. Off and back on again is medium, which is 200 lumens. Off and back on again is high, which is 700 lumens. It does have a kick down um, after after some time and then that will then drop to uh, that drop to 300 lumens um, but now if that is the setting that I want to keep it on I turn it off and put it back in my pocket turn it back on again and it will remember which one that it's on you have to be able to turn it on and off so if, if you do you sit there fidgeting with it like this that you'll just constantly cycle through them probably eventually you'll you know it's, it's not particularly good for the for, for the for the clicker but you find the one that you're on so let's say for me personally I quite like the medium mode um, I find 200 lumens is great just for everyday use turn it off leave it in my pocket don't even have to worry about it come back to it maybe a few hours later when I need to use it again turn it back on and it will stay on the um, on the on the medium setting now I just wanted to compare this so before we go down to the fishing pond or at least before we wait for uh, the, uh, the the Sun to disappear I thought I'd compare this to some other lights um, so first up we've got the pokey light double a let me put these here stop these from uh, from 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 kind of rolling around I got the pokey light double a very similar in size actually the double a is ever so slightly shorter um uh, just just here up at the top i'm guessing some of that might have been to do with the way that this kind of works or uh in the end here for the light because the the, the head unit comes off on this uh, with the pocket light you turn it off you turn it back on again and you get the same whereas with the pocket light you've got you, it i think it's got it's got less modes um, but very similar in size this is fully aluminium whereas this you've got that really nice kind of um, titanium on there plus which Ace Beam have all also said in their kind of marketing is that this is designed to be fiddly you're supposed to to, to, to do that if you're the type that likes that then you're gonna love this if you're the type that likes that but knows that you annoy people well <laughs> It's down to you and love whether whether you want to pick one of these up. Um, next up, we have the uh, we have the Olight i3T, uh, which hopefully you can see is, is is a lot smaller. The best one to compare this one would probably be the i5T, but it's in my pants somewhere. And I can't remember where I've put it. So yeah. Um, anyway, moving on swiftly, uh, you can see this one is definitely quite a lot smaller, but uh, similar similar kind of functionality with turn on and turn off. This has just got the two settings and only runs on a triple A battery. Uh, and then last but not least from through uh, from through night this is the archer pro um, I have the archer pro the, the the smaller version but I'd say the archer pro is probably the best one to compare them to very similar in size uh, whereas the archer pro is is, is definitely wider uh, the difference as well with the archer pro is that this has the charger on here um, just in case but I think the materials and the kind of the fidgetiness of this, that kind of bolt action fidgetness, um, yeah, all great lights. So yeah, let's uh, let's fast forward now. Let's have a look at how well this works down at the fishing pond. Okay, the sun is officially down, and uh, yeah, we'll have a look through the look through the settings. So <clears throat> thought we'd start off. Might as well start as we usually do. We'll start on the low. Uh, we're down at the fishing pond now. There's, uh, there's the house, but can't really see much. Now, uh, I have this on ultra low, 
which is just five lumens. <clears throat> it's a reasonably light night tonight, I will say. So, um, the amount of light that this uses, I, I don't think it's really a true reflection of, uh, of what you can see on the fit on the on the camera here. Uh, but on ultra low, this is five lumens. Now, what I can do is turn it off and back on again. Uh, very quickly and you'll see that it's now on low which is 50 lumens so just on this little fishing wharf and you know well yeah it, it does a reasonably good job I'd say for, 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 for a low 50 lumens is nice if I look here down the path again you probably can't it's not doesn't do it justice but I can see at least 10 meters down there without any issues with the light itself but bringing it back here uh, holding this out a little bit further I will say so I do quite like the warm spot on this it's reasonably well defined um, what I'll do though is so you can do it then do another on and off this then takes it up to medium which is uh, which is which is 200 lumens so again, you can see how defined that warm spot is. And I think what I'll, as I usually do, so this is holding it forward, uh, 200 lumens on medium, 45 degrees to the left, back again, 45 degrees to the right. So the spill on this is reasonably good. The, the edge, the skirt of that um, is reasonably defined. I think because of the... Uh, uh, the, the LED that's in this it, it, it does an exceptionally good job and I think on a medium mode like this um, with 200 lumens it you know it's it, it's great can just about see the ornamental waterfall that I have over there and now over here so we can uh, we can we can see that tree that tree's about 10 meters away um, get into about 15 meters away and then the other side of the pond it's about 20-ish meters away um, now I can do I can turn it off and back on again and now this is on the high mode which is 700 lumens so the 700 lumens will stay on this for 35 seconds before it will then kick down to 300 lumens so just coming back here again here's that tree which is a lot easier to see uh, there you can see the little ornamental fountain oh and a bird flying up into the tree which again is easier to see now if I come back around this way been able to see down the path I can now see the tree that we couldn't certainly couldn't see before um, I see the quality of the light is very nice um, again so if I uh, to the left to the right holding this above like that you can see how well uh, how, na how, how nice that kind of warm spot is actually a bit strange I wouldn't expect for a light like this to have such a pronounced warm spot um, but you know it's 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 kind of cool it's kind of cool that it's there looking out into the water can we see any fish no we can't really see any fish because it's uh, it's been raining a lot recently and we've got a lot of a lot of silt that's come down a lot of waterfall into here um, but yeah again it's just very nice that, that 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 warm spot and the skirt around the warm spot and then the skirt around the actual the actual side of the light uh, turn it back off again and back on and it puts it back down onto ultra low um, which again was those uh, was that was that five lumens so I suppose here we go so ultra low low medium high personally I've been keeping it just on low I think for low 50 lumens is is perfect um, especially inside the house when you know that it's particularly dark um, yeah, it's great. Really like this. Yeah, now I think for me the uh, the RX version two, the Rider RX version two, it's, it, it genuinely is a great light. It's just, it, it's just that pocketable size. I know there's a lot of lights out there that are still classed as EDC. They're just larger. There's there's no kind of getting around that. Yes, they're great for everyday use, but really need to be either be on a belt or they need to be something that you carry in the glove box in your car or something that you have in your bag. Um, 
double A sized lights like this are absolutely worth their weight in, I mean it's not particularly heavy in that fact, but worth their weight in gold just because of how easy these are to integrate into your pocket and I mean I, I, I well it's nice to integrate it into your EDC and your everyday carry but let, I mean let's face it if it fits in your pocket and it just disappears while it's in there that's where the value of these lights really come from and the fact that you're getting a good amount of light with a high CRI on this as well it's just another notch on the bedpost for a company like Ace Beam to have a really nice light like this. Now I want to say a huge thank you again to Ace Beam for sending this out to me and also for the hospitality whilst I was in Germany this year uh, on their stand. Um, again another one of those really nice manufacturers that just make you feel incredibly kind of welcomed when, when you're there. Um, so I will leave their links below so that you can see more from this and where you can pick up one of these. I'll also leave some of my social media links below as well so that you can see more from me here on Moreland DC and also my sister channel Moreland the Tactical. But for now, as always, plant, stay safe, stay more under, and stay EDC. Now apologies again, it is quite a blustery day today, so I do apologize for any wind noise. Uh, apologies for any wind noise you can hear in the background. I have made a rod for my own back, enjoying filming outside. Uh, but before we have a look at the rider version of or at least the you see now straight back from IWA this year <clears throat> hi I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC no what was I gonna go with that I don't even know what I was gonna say what was I gonna say probably something special it's probably something rude I really should I really should get rid of this plant. It just seems like a nice thing to have in the background whilst filming, but it does like to um, take the stage. Take the P I double S S. P I double S? I don't know why I had to say the second S, because I said double at the beginning of that. That's me being dyslexic AF. Anyway. Yeah. Hope you all have a, I'm not sure what day this is coming out because I'm filming a few pieces of content today. Uh, but yeah, I hope you're all having a great week wherever you are in the world and you're hopefully nice and safe because I know there's a lot of troubles going on around the world at the moment. So yeah, I hope you're all good and safe. I'm still clicking this. You can't get out of not clicking this. You just have to click it. If, if you don't like clicky things, don't get one of these. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's just so clicky.